What do you mean by permutation? What do you understand by the brilliant word permutation? Arrangements. Permutation comes from permutare. Per is every. Ah, har bar. Mutare is change. Change everything. A change in every manner. Okay? It's called permutation. What do you mean by change in every manner? Let's say I have a string ABC. I can ch- it's so beautiful that you have no idea. Permutation for that matter. If I have ABC, permutation more than being beautiful, okay? It is very unbiased. It is very liberal. Okay? It doesn't have preconceived notions. It gives equal opportunities to everybody. It is socialists. Okay? <laughs> yeah? It's completely socialist. I'll tell you how. We have, we have a concept in permutation called intra-permutation. I'll speak about that. How is permutation socialist? Okay? So, ABC. Okay? I want to arrange ABC in all manners possible. I will not leave a single manner. Okay? So, I'll start with ABC. Then I have ACB. Then I have BAC. Then I have BCA. Then I have CAB. And then I have CBA. So, how many ways could I do this? Six ways. So, if I have a string of length 3, I can do six permutations of the string. Okay? Then you slowly and steadily evolve with 3 factorial is 6. And that's why we say 3 factorial is the number of ways you permute this. But why do you get 3 factorial is my question. Because there are three positions possible. The first position can be occupied by any of the three letters. The next by the remaining two. And the last by the one letter left. 3 into 2 into 1 is going to be 6. Okay? That's why I have 3 factorial out there. It's a very conceptual chapter if you notice. If you learn this carefully, trust me, you cannot go wrong in permutations. Are, are you clear with this? Why 3 factorial? This is the reason behind. Okay? So anything you permute, it is all about factorials. Not all the time, however. We'll talk about that. Okay? So if you have to permute everything, it's going to be 3, 2, 1. In this case, 6 ways. Clear? Uh, okay, what about this term, NPR? What do you mean by this? NPR. Okay, NPR basically means arrange only this much out of N. So instead of taking NPR, ignore NPR for a while. Let's take 6P4. 6P4 will be arrange 6 out of, I mean, sorry, arrange 4 out of 6. Okay, but I said, as I mentioned earlier, permutation is very unbiased. Okay, so it doesn't have rules like that. It doesn't do selective arrangement. Okay. So for any combinatrix chapter, combinatrix chapter means permutation, combination and likes of the similar ones, probability included in a way. Okay. Any combinatrix chapter, you will follow a rule. You will first find out every possibility and then remove what is not required. Okay. I'll talk about that exactly what I mean. Okay. 6P4 means arrange 4 out of 6, but permutation doesn't allow you to arrange 4 out of 6. Okay. So it says, don't do 4 out of 6, do one thing, I'll do all 6. I'll do my work, I'll do all 6. So you'll arrange all 6. 6 factorial is for sure. It'll say, I'll do my work. But you say, no, 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 I don't want 6. I don't want all 6. I want only 4. you like, fine, you want only 4, so remove the 2 that I arranged extra. Okay? So it's going to be 6 fat by 2 fat. Okay? Since permutation is formed by multiplication, it is removed by division. So 6P4 is basically 6 factorial which is permitting everything and removing what is not needed. What is not needed? I don't need two, two, two of them, right? Because if I have 6 elements, let's say I have A, B, C, D, E, F, permutation in 6 factorial has arranged everything. But I let's say don't want one, two of these. So I'll have to remove their arrangements. How will you arrange the two of them? Two factorial. That's why you remove it. Okay? So got the point? That's why I said socialist, okay? What do you mean by let's say 9P3? What is the answer of 9P3? So, arrange only 3 out of 9. So, it's going to be 9 factorial because it will arrange all first and then remove what is not required. What is not required? 6 of them are not required. 6 factorial. Yeah? So, 9 factorial upon 6 factorial. Yeah, whatever it is. 9 into 8 into 7. That's perfectly fine. And that's precisely it. So, this is called permutation. Okay? This is called NPR permutation for that matter. Okay? Are we clear with this concept? The basics of permutation is okay. Let's move forward there. Okay. NPR is rule is uh, very well, I mean, sorted in your head. All of you, NPR. 
All right. So let's move ahead. What kind of questions can you expect in permutation? A lot of them. I'll start with types. The first type. Okay, type one is just the basic type. I would say the arrangement type. Okay, the way you arrange it. So we can take a question. In how many ways can we arrange the letters of the word? In how many ways can we arrange the letters of the word? Simple. Simple. Such that. Sub question one. The arrangement starts with E. The arrangement starts with E. Next question. The arrangement ends in M. Next question. The arrangement starts with M, ends in P. All right. Let's look at it. First and foremost, how many ways you need to arrange simple? How many ways are there to arrange simple? Six factorial ways. There are six letters, six factorial. Fair point. Okay. You can always say make spaces like this. Six spaces. You have six six possibilities, five possibilities, four, three, two, and one. And that's how I get six factorial. Fine. All right. But now they have some constraints. They want the arrangement start with E, which means E is fixed. E will not change. How many left? Five. Four, three, two, one. Five factorial. One twenty. The first answer is one twenty. Fair? Because S is fixed. Now I just have five letters to move around. Okay? So it's going to be five factorial. Clear? So S is fixed. Next, ends in M. What is the answer for this? Same. Which means the position doesn't really matter in permutation. All that matters is who is fixed and who is not. Okay, so even if it's at the end, you're gonna get the same answer: five, four, three, two, and one, which is one twenty. Starts with M, ends in P. Yeah, you have M at the start, and you have P at the end. Remaining four guys, four factorial, twenty-four. Clear? A very basic question. Okay, very basic. Are you on the same page? Type one, very basic question. Just the arrangement types. Okay, it's perfectly all right. Now let's say we go to type two. Take a question. Six boys and six girls to be arranged on twelve chairs. Six boys and six girls to be arranged on twelve chairs. In how many ways can you do this? If There are no constraints. First question: No constraints. In how many ways can you do that? If there are no constraints. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Second. Okay. It's okay. We don't need the answer. Now just just look at that. Just look at that kind of questions that can be asked. No constraint. Well, fair. Fair point. Okay. Next question: All boys sit together. You'll have five questions like this. Okay. In one set itself, we'll have five questions. So no constraint. All boys sit together. The next will be no two girls sit together. No two girls sit together. The next can be boys and girls sit alternately. All right. And next will be one of the variation questions or maybe a circular arrangement question. But you have a question of five set. It's going to be like this, okay? In permutations, so you have no constraints. All boys sit together. No two girls sit together. Boys and girls sit alternately. Let's start. First, no constraint. The answer is twelve factor. You all know that. All boys sit together. Now what I do is <coughs> seven factor. Just a minute. Since now, since I want all the boys to sit together, I'll tie them with a string. This is called a string method. You tie them with a string. Okay. The girls are flexible. The girls can move wherever they want to. But the boys are tied up. So basically, I have how many elements? Seven elements. How many ways you arrange seven elements? Seven factorial. But 
the boys who are inside can also be arranged in their own way which is six factorial so the answer is seven fact into six fact okay seven fact for the seven elements form one element is the set of boys this this is one element and the remaining six are the girls so seven elements seven factorial and then you have six factorial for the boys are we clear so whenever we have all boys sit together all vowels are together all consonants together all the digits are together blah 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 whenever we have all are together you got to tie them up okay always keep in mind tie them up okay what about no two girls sit together now no two girls sit together whenever you have a question on no two girls sit together no two vowels are together no two particular digits together blah 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 all you do is you have two types here you have girls and boys where is the constraint right now on the girls so let's first place the boys so i have six boys so i'll place them in how many ways six factorial ways now when i place these six boys i generate gaps i'll use some fancy colors now i'll generate gaps okay so this is gap 1 gap 2 gap 3 gap 4 gap 5 gap 6 gap 7 you see seven gaps in these seven gaps you can keep the girls because if you keep the girls in these seven gaps nobody will be together there'll always be at least one boy between two girls yeah how do you keep seven, six girls in seven gap 7 p 6 keep in mind the slang for p is also place the slang by the way for example combination ka c the slang for it is choose slang for p is place okay so i have seven places but i have six people to place 7p6 you can place any six wherever you want to okay out of seven 7p6 yeah six factor or 7p6 as good as six factor and seven factor this can be written as six factor seven factor are we clear yeah so you have seven places you can place any six okay now you might have a doubt now normally what happens is when i teach this in uh, any class for that matter they come up with something some doubt like that 7p6 okay is fine they say that is as good as alternate now why to do it this way why do it this way do it alternate same i said not the same why it's not the same because i have seven places i can choose to ignore this gap if i ignore this particular gap look how the arrangement is it is like this girl boy girl boy girl boy boy girl boy girl boy girl in this case the two boys are coming together which is not to an alternate alternate may has to have a restriction that boy and girl need to be alternate you understand that your two boys can still come together i may choose to not fill that gap you understand that that's why it's different than alternate so when you have no two you'll use the method called gap method we'll make gaps and go ahead okay you'll use a gap method You make gaps and go ahead. When you use gaps, no two together. Okay. Next, next question is boys and girls are alternate. When I say boys and girls are alternate, very, very, very straightforward. I can have B G, B G like that. B G. How many ways? Six fact for boys, six fact for girls. But when I say alternate B G B G B G, I can also have alternate G B G B G B. So again, I have six fact for boys, six fact for girls. Addition of these two. Okay, you know why do you add, right? You don't multiply, you add. Why do you add? Yeah, because it's either or. You can say it's either or, or you can say this case is also valid and that case also valid. That's why you add both the cases. Okay. So what is that going to be? Six fact square into two. 